everyone. Welcome to ChemTalk Education. In today's video, we'll be going over how to determine the charges of ions and write chemical formulas from there, as well as how ions are used in photography. So let's talk about it. First of all, let's define some key terms we'll be using throughout the video. Ions are simply atoms with a charge. This charge is a representation of whether an element has greater or fewer electrons than protons. A cation is an ion with a positive charge. It has more protons than electrons. Since cats have paws, you can remember that cations are positive. Anions are ions with a negative charge. They have more electrons than protons. Let's now discuss how to determine the charge of an ion. You may calculate this if you're given the number of protons and electrons in an element and then subtract the two to find the charge. However, there's a much more convenient way to do this and that's by looking at the periodic table. Group one or column one elements have a charge of plus one. Group two has charges of plus two. Then skip the transition metals in between. Those charges will vary. The group after that has elements with charges of plus three. The next group has elements of charges plus or minus four. It really depends on the situation. The next group has a minus three charge, the next a minus two charge, and finally a one minus charge. Since column eight A, the noble gases all have a full octet of valence electrons, they have no charge. Let's do some practice on determining the charge of elements. What's the charge of fluorine? Fluorine is in group 7a on the periodic table, so it has a minus one charge. What about magnesium? Since magnesium is in group 2a, it has a two plus charge. What about aluminum? Aluminum is in group 3a, so it has a plus three charge. As mentioned before, we can't tell the charges of transition metals by simply glancing at the periodic table. However, if we are given a transition metal with Roman numerals written in parentheses, those numerals will represent the charge. For instance, if we are given copper and the Roman numerals for two in parentheses next to copper, we know that in this example, copper has a plus two charge. Now let's discuss how to write the formula for chemical compounds made out of ions. Say we want to write the formula for sodium oxide. First write out the elements and their charges. Sodium is Na and it has a one plus charge on the periodic table. Oxygen is represented by O and it has a two minus charge. The next step is to check if charges cancel out. In other words, do the charges sum to zero? Well, they don't in this example, so we need to make them cancel out by adjusting the number of atoms in this compound. A great way to do this is the crisscross method. Take the charge of Na and bring it down here to oxygen, and take oxygen's charge and bring it to Na. We get rid of the positive and negative signs because these numbers no longer represent charge. They represent the number of atoms. So our compound now is Na2O. This means we have two sodiums and one oxygen in this compound. And this makes sense because if we multiply these two sodiums with its charge of one, we get two. And the one oxygen times oxygen's charge of negative two gives us negative two. Two and negative two cancel out, which is an indication that we did this correctly. Let's try another example together. Write the formula for bismuth bromide. So here we are given that bismuth has a plus three charge. So we can write it as Bi plus three. From our periodic table, we can see that bromine has a one minus charge. So we write Br one minus. Now do the crisscross method. So bring the three over to bromine and the one to bismuth. Therefore, we have BiBr3 as our answer. 
If we want to verify that this is correct, we multiply the one bismuth atom by its charge of three to get three, and the three bromine atoms by its charge of negative one to get negative three. Three and negative three cancel out, so we're correct. Since we've done some practice together, go ahead and try some on your own. Up here on the screen are some practice problems relating to ion charges and chemical formulas. You can check your work with the answer key posted in the description box down below. Now, let's talk about something really cool, and that's the chemistry behind photography. Photographic film often contains silver bromide salt held in gelatin. When the film is exposed to light, the bromide ion is ionized, resulting in a freed electron that reduces a silver ion. Depending on how much light the film is exposed to, the amount of silver that's reduced will be directly affected. This is what makes a photo develop into a real image with contrast, and this contrast is created based on the differing amounts of light that the film is exposed to. Before we end this video, let's recap what we covered in our lesson today. Ions are charged atoms, and charges are how many electrons in relation to protons exist in an element. By looking at the groups of a periodic table, we can determine the charge of an ion. When writing chemical formulas for ions that bond together, we determine the charge of both ions and use the crisscross method to determine how many of each we need. Ions are seen within photography, as the silver ions within photographic film are reduced to produce images. And that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and please visit us at www.chemistrytalk.org to access more great chem content. Bye!